Got it. All right, hello and welcome to Veritas Group's video series where we meet every Monday to discuss the many nuances of climate action and sustainability planning. I'm Daniel Lossi, a principal and chief century thinker at Veritas Group. And today I am so excited to speak with Wanda Colo. Wanda is the Director of Sustainable Operations and Construction Management at the St. Louis Zoo. And I've known you for three plus years in the AZA world and with the Sustainability Institute that you created and formed out of nothing. And you're gonna help us dive into sustainability master planning at zoos and aquariums. So let's get started. You ready, Wanda? I am excited to be here. Thanks, Daniel. And it's great to see you too. Thank you. Um, I wanted to just kind of ask a more personal question to get us started. What led you into working with sustainability within zoos and aquariums? So I was uh, completing a master's degree in urban planning and real estate development. And I really became passionate about just the intersection of how our built environment and, um, you know, impacts natural resources and climate change. And when the opportunity came up to work at St. Louis Zoo, um, I just knew it was going to be a great fit. Um, it's working for an organization that is a conservation, you know, has a conservation mission. Um, and it's a, a beloved institution here in the St. Louis community, but also renowned around the world. So I just knew that we could make a positive difference. And just working in the zoo field in general, um, you know, we have this really unique opportunity to connect people with animals and with the challenges that they're facing in their natural habitats. And we have this opportunity when the guests walk through our door from the time that they walk in to the time that they leave, that we can really model things for them and um, show solutions and kind of normalize those solutions. So it's, it's a great opportunity to kind of work in this space where the, the, the mission really is conservation. Love it. I love that deep tie to conservation and the opportunity zoos are such trusted institutions in the community. So when you model behavior, people pay attention and they trust that. So I know like timeliness is interesting. Our call is happening a week before the AZA annual conference. Super exciting when people from across the country come together to share what's going on in the zoo and aquarium world. Um, what do you hope to see about sustainability this year? Do you think anything's changing maybe with the IPCC report that just came out last month? Um, what are you hoping for next week? Yeah, I am. I'm really looking forward to it. And despite it being a virtual conference, you know, it's always nice to run into people and see each other in person. I'm really excited to see a lot of, you know, friends and peers, uh, virtually at least. And I will for one say that I'm thrilled to see the number of sessions that are focusing on sustainability specifically. I think this year is the most that I've seen at an annual conference specifically. The annual conferences are trickier because there's, there's, there's just so much competition for space. And so um, to have, I think there's at least three sessions or four that are really just very specific to sustainability. And I think that's fantastic. So I'm glad to see that. Um, they're definitely on my calendar. I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to hearing from some of our peers um, that I know have been working on sustainability plans to kind of hear how their progress is going um, and where, where they are in the process, how, how it's been going. So I know that's going to be a session that you'll be leading and definitely uh, looking forward to that one. And I, see yeah, that one is, that one is on Monday. It's going to be talking about using the sustainability master planning effort to catalyze action. So we're a big fan of, you can't just do a plan that sits on a shelf. I know Wanda, you are a woman of action and project management and you know how to get things done. And I really appreciate that about you. And so how do we use the planning process to actually catalyze action during the process? And once the plan is done, that it actually happens. So that's, that's a good cue on Monday, September 20th, a week from today at 3 p.m. Central Time, there will be a panel discussion that I'm hosting with the Seattle Aquarium, the Dallas Zoo, and Omaha's Henry Dorley Zoo and Aquarium. So if you're coming to the AZA conference, check that, that panel out. And you were going to say one other thing. 
about yeah, sustainability. You know, I'm just, as- I'm, I'm really hopeful to see, you know, a good participation and hopeful to see a lot of C-suite leaders join um, some of these discussions because I think it's, especially with it, I guess, being virtual, that does help in some ways to kind of be able to uh, quickly be in other places as opposed to having to walk across a whole, you know, huge space to get to the next session. Um, I, I certainly hope people take advantage of that and um, join um, these really great sessions. I, I'm excited also to hear about the sustainable, the new task, uh, the working group for um, re- sustainability in retail specifically that's formed. Mm. And that uh, kind of, there's a, there's a session about that. So I'm really excited to hear about all those. And again, just looking forward to, to catching up with people and, and seeing how, how progress is going at their institution. So. Yeah, I love that. I love that word connections. I think that as time progresses, we gain more awareness of how we're connected to all of the things, right? Some of us are very tied into connectedness of our actions here impact not just my immediate surroundings right now, but what about on the retail side, the supply chains, and not just the materials of the supply chains, but the people making the materials and where are the materials coming from and what's the impact in the communities where these materials are taken from nature, extracted or or created or grown if they're plant-based. And so I love that we're seeing a growing expansion of how we understand connectedness Um, in in the industry. And I think too, there's a a connection piece that is growing between conservation. Something that's really surprised me in the zoo and aquarium world is there is sometimes a disconnect between people who are hardcore conservation, preserve the species, race, fight extinction, take care of the natural habitat, invest tons of money to preserve natural spaces, but they don't always understand or, or maybe don't have the bandwidth to put the capacity towards what are our actions today? right here at our zoo, at our aquarium, in the business community of St. Louis or Omaha or wherever you are. And so I'm fascinated. We've facilitated a few different conversations for organizations that say, well, what is that connection point? If you want to say you're a conservation leader, what are you doing in the field? And what are you doing, not just with the research in-house, but what are you doing with your operations? What are you doing to reduce your emissions so the impacts of climate change are less because climate change is driving extinctions in different parts for different species? Absolutely. Or what about the waste that you're generating? I know the Aquarium Conservation Partnership a few years ago really emphasized reducing single-use plastics because of the impact that it has on water systems, not just the rivers and streams that might be near where you are, but the oceans where that trash, that plastic that doesn't decompose ultimately ends up. Yep, absolutely. What are you yeah. seeing in that connection point between conservation and sustainability? Yeah, I think it has a certainly, I think since the time that I uh, became involved, you know, started working at St. Louis Zoo and really became involved in AZA um, almost 10 years ago now, um, there has been a, a really big um, growth. I think there is more of a connection, but it's still, I, I agree that there still can be a disconnect in with that field conservation and um, even like in situ conservation of uh, breeding um, endangered animals and things and the operation. Um, But I think with AZA and the Green Scientific Advisory Group that, you know, put together the green guides um, and, you know, since 2014, uh, I'm sorry, I think it was 2013 when um, the AZA accreditation language adopted Uh, that sustainability planning and and a sustainability plan um, should be part of every organization that goes through the AZA accreditation process. I think that helped spur a lot more um, interest and a lot more sort of um, diving deeper at each, you know, at, at organizations to look at operations, specifically business operations. How are, you know, how are we how, what is our footprint? What is our climate footprint? What is our waste footprint? How can we reduce those first? And again, it's understanding where you're starting from. So it's understanding your baseline, uh, establishing a a collective shared vision of what progress will mean, and then establishing those, you know, those kind of mile markers of knowing that you're making progress. And that's really the plan, you know, that's what the plan is in a very, very basic terms. Um, But I think one of the, you know, I I think just seeing 
more and more organizations uh, creating their plans. Um, you know, one of the biggest benefits I think to creating a plan is that, that, that the value of it is that process of bringing people together to have these critical conversations from across an organization. So people are able to, across departments, put that sustainability lens on and really think about what does my operation or my piece of the operation, how can we make sure that it's aligning with that overall collective vision? And so, um, you know, I, I, I've certainly seen a lot of hopeful progress there. And I think um, again, just going back to seeing how many sessions at this annual conference this year are focused on sustainability, it's that that right there shows that it, there's more and more of this, like, uh, I guess, intersection between the, the conservation and the field research and all of that stuff that we excel at at zoos and aquariums, and also bringing in that operations side of like, what is our campus like? <laughs> exactly. I love some of the words you use. You used alignment. You used vision. I see a sustainability master plan for an organization as this organizational alignment. So everybody gets on the same page. This is what sustainability is, and this is our vision for it, which then allows people across the organization from front lines to even the people who just come in seasonally know that this is part of what I do. And then the operate operalization of it, of the, the goals and the strategies that help you move the needle towards reducing your emissions, reducing your water use. Um, and then this idea of integration. I sometimes hear people talk about conservation as the outside game and sustainability as the inside game. And that research piece is kind of integrating in part, but finding a way to integrate those two across the organization's mission right. for conservation is super exciting. And that process piece is so critical, like you mentioned. It really does bring people together so that that alignment can happen. And then once you have that clear vision, it actually brings people together and empowers and inspires them to take action across the organization. That, that leads me to uh, think about two things. One is the Aquarium Conservation Partnership is getting ready next week to talk about a climate goal that they're mm -hmm. gonna ask their members to adopt. So there's gonna be an opportunity for aquariums to baseline the greenhouse gas emissions, to set this goal and then track uh, and measure progress towards the goal. But I also, in the last couple of minutes, wanted to just hear from you, what, what is the Sustainability Institute? How did that get started? And what would you say about it? I know we've had two, I was part of the first two. You're the creator, the director of the Institute and the one who holds the center of that. What would you like to share with our, our viewers about the Sustainability Institute and how it might be able to help them develop and craft their sustainability master plans. Yeah, um, so the sustain the Ogilvy Sustainability Institute was created, um, let's see, the first year was 2019. And um, really what it's, the focus of that course is, it's it's a week long course that happens at Ogilvy at the, um, at the resort there where a lot of AZA uh, trainings happen among others. Um, so the National Recreation and Parks Association and um, AZA Green Scientific Advisory Group were really hoping to create sort of a place where people could go, send their staff to learn what a sustainability plan is, how they can create a sustainability plan, kind of start those, some of those uh, baselining things like uh, organizing, uh, you know, energy and water bills and waste tracking, those things. Um, and start to kind of organize all of this information into the start of a plan. Um, you know, we, we did have the first two, uh, two years. And so this, this course is very much kind of geared towards the parks world and then also zoos and aquariums. So it's a little bit of a, a, a com combination of, of people that are coming to this. But, um, you know, the, the first two years were very successful, of course, this last year, well, this year, 2021, um, with everything going on that kind of threw a wrench in our plans of, ha of hosting it, um, we are hopeful that we'll pull together a 2022 course. Um, we are still kind of in the process of figuring out the logistics with that. It would be in February in 2022 if it does go forward. Um, so please, you know, keep an eye out for that. Um, but it is really, you know, the, the huge benefit of that course is that you, you're, you um, you get to make connections with people from, from different zoos, aquariums, 
parks throughout our country. Um, we even had a park from Canada come and join last time. But so, you know, it, it allows you to be connected with people that are working on these very specific, very similar things at their organizations, um, talk through some of the challenges, um, and again, make those peer connections so that when you do go home and you're ready to, you know, go to your leadership and your, um, to the, the different departments at your organization to keep working on that plan, you've got people to reach out to for help and sort of like bouncing ideas off of what worked for you, what didn't maybe work. Um, so I am certainly hopeful to, to, that we can, we can uh, pull together a 2022 course and yeah, just, I guess, keep an eye out for that. Awesome. Well, we will be sure to link that in our comments and blog about this uh, conversation so people can watch and see what the 2020, the 2020 course was in February, right yes. before the pandemic happened. Um, and then watch uh, Ogilvy Institute for the 2022 course. Right. Thank you, Wanda, for joining me today. I'm really excited to continue to work with you and see all the great things you're doing at St. Louis Zoo and with the Sustainability Institute. You really are a change agent within the zoo and aquarium world. Um, so thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you so much, Daniel. It was great to see you. And yeah, I look forward to working with you. And I, I can't wait to see your session at the AZA conference. Thanks for plugging that again. So next Monday, September 20th, 3 p.m. Central Time, there will be a panel discussion with the Seattle Aquarium, the Dallas Zoo, and Omaha's Henry Dorley Zoo and Aquarium um, at the AZA conference. And I'll tease you a little bit that each one of them are in a different stage of their sustainability master plan. Seattle Aquarium is just wrapping theirs up this month and next. Dallas Zoo finished theirs right as the pandemic was starting. And the Omaha Henry Dorley Zoo and Aquarium has actually had one since 2012. They've hit goals, they've added, they've adopted and, and reset goals. And this year, since they hit their second round of goals, um, they're readjusting, checking in and deciding what kind of goals they want to set again. So it's a really fun place to see three different uh, organizations in three different places. So thanks again, everybody, for watching today. If you want to watch any of our past Facebook Live discussions, sign up for our newsletter or read our blog, please visit us at veritasgroup.com. And we also have a free downloadable on our website this quarter, which breaks down how to create what we call a climate action plan that might also have some helpful steps as you're thinking about a sustainability or climate plan. So check that out. Thank you again, Wanda, St. Louis Zoo, uh, for joining me and sharing all of the gems of wisdom that you've gotten with all your years of experience. So thank you. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Onward and upward uh, to a wonderful week, everyone. Be well. Bye.